بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على ولد الدين والدين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ان شاء الله today we'll be going the one of the sahaba's biography as we have uh, already announced ان شاء الله we did last week julaibib uh, today our sahabi that will be going through his biography and his his life is a a sahabi who's called Ka'b ibn Malik Ka'b ibn Malik one of the young sahaba of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so the reason we are going through this uh, story very interesting story really a very very interesting story is that we just need to benefit and you need uh, to learn from it inshallah and that is why we are we are we are learning the 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 life of the sahaba of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so Ka'b ibn Malik before we go into Ka'b ibn Malik inshallah uh, they are, what we need to know about is the, the battle of Tabuk because it goes parallel, you know, parallel paragraphy of, of Ka'b ibn Malik. Without knowing the, the expedition of Tabuk, expedition of Tabuk, then we cannot know Ka'b ibn Malik because that is where uh, the story is more involved. So we'll just give some foundation about that, that uh, expedition, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ghazwa to Tabuk is a, an expedition. It is not a battle. The Prophet ﷺ went from Medina to up to, you know, inside almost. Now it's, uh, now it's in, in, in Saudi Arabia. Before it was, it, was, it was in Iraq. And by the time the Romans were the ones who were ruling there. So they, they, were, they have, you know, walked for almost uh, a thousand kilometers inside, outside from Medina. So it, it was the ninth of Hijrah. The, the time of this expedition was 9th of Rijal Rajab, 9th of Hijrah, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. The reason why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has uh, moved and marched to this place was the Romans who are, who are you know, uh, with the empire at that time, they threatened the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions, so they brought a lot of army into the, the boundary and they wanted to invade and attack the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard about that, he prepared himself and he went to to, to march to them. So that was the, the expedition of, of, of Tabuk. So our, our story will be inside Tabuk. Okay? Inside Tabuk. Right. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to, used to tell his companions whenever he wants to uh, go for a battle, he used to normally used to cover you know, the place. He used to say, we are going this way. If he's going this way, if he's going to London, he will say, and in Islam, it is allowed in, in, in the battle. It is a tactic of a battle. It is allowed in Islam, you know, to say we are going here and where we are fighting. So, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi all the time when he wants to go for a battle, he will make it clear, uh, sorry, he will cover it. He will say we are going this way. But this time, in Ghazwa to Tabuk, the expedition of Tabuk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make it apparent to everyone. He said we are going and we are moving to Tabuk. And the reason why <coughs> is because of the distance, the long distance, because of the people they are facing, they are not Arabs, they are you know, Romans, more stronger and more powerful than the Arabs. And uh, the reason why also Prophet Sallallahu said was that people have to prepare themselves. All the Sahaba should clearly know what we are going, Prophet Sallallahu said. So Prophet Sallallahu has announced to the Sahaba all, you know, that and that they will going to be going to Tabuk and everybody has to prepare himself. You know, in, in the time of Prophet Sallallahu everybody has to sponsor himself, there's no government that is behind, you know. You have to bring your mount, you have to bring your animal, you have to bring your clothes, you have to bring everything, and you know, prepare yourself and everything. So this was the case. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told the Sahaba clearly that we are going there. That day we're going to march, we're going to move from Medina, so everyone, you have to prepare. So roughly were 30,000 army, 30,000 men who are, and this is the largest, largest, you know, number of Sahaba in all time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that were, I, uh, came together, 30,000 men, 30,000 army, were marching to Tabuk. It's a lot of, lot of Sahaba, Ruhanullah Ali. The only people that were excused to, to be left behind were people who are you know, weak or people who are sick, people who cannot join the, the fight, people who are sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So the people who are old and the people who are sick, you know, and the people who did not have the means to travel, okay? They were people who didn't have the resources. They couldn't even get that, that, that you know, the, the mount. So, so they were excused. The, some of them came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, take, 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 with, take, take us with you. We don't have anything. Sponsor us. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there's nothing I can do for you. 
سو على ما اتوك لتحملهم قلت لا اجد ما حملكم عليه تولوا اعينهم تفيضوا من الدمع حزنا الا يجدوا ما ينفقون سو وان دي سي ذيس ان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم تول ذيم ذيس نوثينغ اي كان هيلب يو ذي ليفت وايل ذي شيدينغ تيس دي وا دي دي واز ستريمينغ تيرز بيكوز اوف ذا اوبورتونيتي ذي هاد وذ ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم سو ذيس ار ذا فيرست ون ذا سيكند ون هو ليفت بيهايند بوربوسلي ذيم سيلف وار اول ذا هيبوكريتس المنافق The Munafiqin, all of them, the, the Syrians, they say there were maybe 80 of them. So they left behind with their excuse, Prophet ﷺ. So these were the two categories who are left behind. And the third category is the category that we are coming to the point which is Ka'b ibn Malik and his two friends. Okay? So this is how the, the Sahaba prepared themselves and the Prophet ﷺ after that, he left with the Sahaba. They went for the mission. Our, our, our Sahabi today, Ka'b ibn Malik, This is where his, his story begins, okay? His life begins in here. So when the Prophet ﷺ sent Ka'b ibn Malik was, uh, was among the companions of Prophet ﷺ, he didn't go with the Prophet ﷺ that first day. He said, maybe there's no problem, I'll prepare myself tomorrow, okay? I will do it tomorrow. This, this happens to everyone, you know? I'll go to the masjid tomorrow. Okay, I'll fast tomorrow. And you don't really know tomorrow we're going to come. So he said, inshallah, it is not a long distance, so I can cover it, inshallah. And then he went on and on and on and on and on and on. Every day he's saying, Ka'ab al-Malik, inshallah, I have to join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But unfortunately, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, they have gone long distance now. There's no way whatsoever that he can join the Sahaba Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He gave up now. Ka'ab al-Malik gave up, joining the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when Ka'b ibn Malik stayed in Medina, the, he says the only people who are left in Medina were the hypocrites. Wherever I go, this munafiq. So the good people have left. The people, good people, have left, and with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So all you could do is could wait. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stayed in Tabuk for roughly 20, 20 days or 30 days, and then that takes one month, and then he came back. He said, "When I had the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is coming back." then everything start, you know, I become, you know, uh, uh, feeling bad about that. Because what am I going to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What excuse am I going to give the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You have to get a genuine excuse for this. Are you going to be with the Munafiqeen? Because most of the people will see you as a Munafiq. Or are you in the other category where people are excused and exempted because they're weak, because they're old, you are not there, and where are you? So he says, I was very, very sad, and I was trying to put my thoughts and my understanding what I will going to say when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes, says. All the time, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes near and near and then he comes into Medina, Wallahi Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He comes into Medina, the first thing that he comes to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina is he comes to the masjid, prays sunnah there. So when he comes into the masjid and prays sunnah there, who comes first? The munafiqeen, now they have to give the excuse. Ya Rasulallah, my wife was sick. Ya Rasulallah, my son was sick. Ya Rasulallah, I was taking care of this, this, that, this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't give them a, you know, he knew and he said, that's fine. Everyone comes, Rafiq. Fine, fine, no problem. Ka'ab ibn Malik, he came late. Before he came to the masjid, he said, I have planned a plan where I have to lie to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that I can get away from these difficult situations. That's what he has planned. All the way, he has planned something to say to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he will be getting away from this trouble because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to summon him and ask him, what was the reason why you did not join the, the, the expedition? He was a young chap. He had the, the, the resources. He had the, you know, the mountain and everything. But anyway, he said, that's what I have planned. But when I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming to the masjid, he said, everything disappeared. He said, no, no, it's not going to work. The only thing that will support me and that will take me from this difficult situation is I have to speak about the truth, nothing. And that is Ikhwani, what we have to do. Sometimes we will find difficulty in our life where you have to make a judgment, where you have to make a decision in life, education, marriage, business, okay? And sometimes we will lie. We are humans, there's no one, I think there's no one who's saying to say I haven't lied in my life, of course. But again, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when he was asked about a believer, will he lie? He said, a believer will not lie. 
So sometimes the truth will save you from that. To, 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 say, to talk about the truth and say, look, uh, this is how it is. So Kabir Ibn you know, planned and said, now, look, everything has this. I have to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know what happened? When the Munafiqeen went from the masjid, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled. He was waiting for him. Anyway, when we were in Tabuk, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where, where is Ka'b al-Mal, where is he? <coughs> Those are the Sahaba, they are not in the same level there. People are huge. Just ask, where is he? Okay. Sometimes we see in the masjid, we, 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 we can't find Fulan, we said, where is he? You understand? And sometimes we might ask someone. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, where is Ka'b al-Malik? They couldn't find. He's not in, in the expedition, Ya Rasulullah. He was left behind. So when he came into the masjid, the Prophet Sallallahu smiled to him and he said, Ya Ka'b, what's going on? What happened? Why didn't you join us? So he said, I look up the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, did you not have your mountain? Did you not have your camel? Why are you not, why are you not, why are you not you know, uh, ready to join? He said, Ya Rasulullah. Before he even answered, he said, Ya Rasulullah, listen to me. He said, I'm a shair. Some of the shair speaks, you know, share. Wallah, if I sit with you today and plan and everything, and I tell you something, you will believe me. Okay, you will believe me. I have that ability. I'm so sophisticated. I, I will make you to believe what I say. But the problem, he said, Ya Rasulullah, the wahi will come. <laughs> the wahi will come, and it will expose my life. The Prophet he said, Ya Rasulullah, I can tell you something that you will be happy. You will be happy when I will say my excuse. But if the wahi and revelation comes and expose my lies to you, Ya Rasulullah, I will not be happy with you. But well, let me tell you, Ya Rasulullah, I haven't got any excuse whatsoever. It is simple. Is it something big? You need to say something like that sometimes. When you want to give an excuse to your parents, to a wife, be frank and say, it. okay, I did wrong. Let me tell you the truth. That is what happened. Black and white. Allah loves that. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Or you who believe fear Allah and be those who are speaking the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And this is the revelation of this. Ya Rasulullah, I did not have any excuse. I was stronger and I was wealthier and I had the capability and I have, I have everything. But I didn't. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Amma hadha faqad sadaq. This one, this man spoke about the truth. He didn't say to the Murafiqin. So was he left alone? He wasn't left alone. That's why I'll test the beginning now for Ka'b al Malik. So he Prophet said, Ya Ka'b, okay, go. Hatta yahkum Allahu baynak. Until Allah judges for your, um, decides for your issue. Go. Leave the masjid. It is a test, really. Ka'b al Malik leaves the masjid. We said we left, we go on with our life. And after three, four days, there is a, <coughs> a decree, okay? A decree, the Prophet ﷺ says, all the Sahaba to boycott Ka'b ibn Malik. Don't speak with him. No one is allowed to speak to Ka'b ibn Malik. <laughs> it's difficult. Speaking. I had the news, he said, I was home. I had the news, the Prophet ﷺ said, there's no one is allowed to speak to Ka'b ibn Malik. See, this was very difficult because I already have that, you know, press and, you know, you know, all that. So he said, I stayed home and he went on, he went on. And he says, I, I will leave my house and come into the market and I'll try to look for the Sahaba and try to speak to them. Assalamu alaikum. Mm. There's no even Sahaba. Assalamu alaikum. There's nothing. Nobody is going to return. He goes to the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he looks for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is he looking at you? He will look at me, and then by the time he sees me, he will, he will turn his back. He doesn't want to say him. He will go to the Prophet ﷺ and say, Assalamu alaikum, Rasulullah. And the Prophet ﷺ will not even return his. Subhanallah. It was a test. So he said, my neighbor was Abu Dujana, one of my cousins. Abu Dujana, great man. He was my neighbor and he was my cousin. Very friend, close friend. So I wanted to test him. He said, how things are now. It's going. This is the most closest person to me in terms of relation and in terms of friendship. So he says, I went over the wall and I, I saw him there and he said, yeah, about the jana, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's no reply. Yeah. And then he says, yeah, about the jana, did you not know that I believe in Allah and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I am sahabi, there's no answer. 
absolutely whatsoever. Subhanallah al -Adim. So, this was the situation of Kaab Malik Allah alayhi. After a while again, he says, there's another decree, a second one again, which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you should not cohabit and live with your wives. Free them. Your wives. They are close. People have been also freed from them. Your wives, the wives, they're not allowed. So things, he said, it's Malik for 40 days, for 50 days, things were not good. We were not up or we're not down. We were not eating, we are not sleeping. He said, and there were two other Sahabi. Two other Sahabi. I missed some, some point, uh, subhanAllah, I missed some point. When the Prophet came to the masjid, sorry, came to the masjid, and he said that when he left that, his relatives, close friends, they wanted to convince him, to instigate him, to go back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say, Ya Rasulullah, that was a lie. <laughs> Again, you understand? So they wanted to convince him anyway. He refused. So the situation was for 40, 50 days, Ka'ab ibn Malik, Allah Alaihi, had that difficulty and all that difficulty until Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has also described their situation and the situation of others in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ قُلِّفُوا حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ وَضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَا الْجَاءَ مِنَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا إِلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَالتَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the tawbah. So what happened was, after 40, 50 days of that situation, nobody's talking to them. The Prophet was not talking to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah that their repentance were accepted, their tawbah was accepted. So I said, I was praying Fajr in the house. I had a voice far away that is saying, Abshir, Abshir, have glad tidings. Your, your, your tawbah is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he went to the masjid, Masjid Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba. And he was revealed. So this story has some of them been uh, stated in Surah Tawbah mainly is to do with Tabuk, a very heavy, sophisticated ayas. And whoever knows Arabic will understand it. Very heavy ayas. Speaking about the hypocrites, speaking about the police, speaking about mushrikeen, speaking about believers, those who have not joined the battle, the, the ghazwa, those who are left behind, those who did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise, and that was really hard. And really, when you see the life they are living, and the life we are living, it is huge. It is between the heavens and the earth. Really. The Sahaba, their life was so difficult. They don't have that financial as we have today. Again, they sacrificed, they were tested to the limit, really. And what have we, are we to sacrifice for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلِ النَّبِيِّ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted the repentance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and muhajirin and ansar. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ أَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُ فِي سَاعَةِ الْعُسْرَةِ Those who followed him, the difficulty time. The difficulty time who marched with him, who stayed with him, who sacrificed their life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مِن بَعْدِ مَا كَادَ يَزِيغُ قُلُوبُ فَرِيقٍ مِّنْهُمْ When some of the, them, their sights were going down because of fear. مِّنْهُمْ ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّهُ رُفْحِمْ And he said, وَعَلَى الثَّلَاثَةِ الَّذِينَ خُلِّفُوا And those, the three, those who are left behind, Allah's acceptance, their repentance, حَتَّى إِذَا ضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ until the, the earth uh, becomes small to them. Constraint. The, the earth becomes small to them. You know, there was nowhere you could go. وَاقْضَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُمْ وَظَنُّوا أَلَّا مَلْجَاءَ إِلَّا 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 اللَّهِ And there's no way out from here except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how this ended. You know, it is a long, I shorten it as much as I can, but this was the story of Ka'ab ibn Malik, so what are we benefiting from after 1440 years ago? And this is the point we are coming to. It is not just a history. It is not just a biography. It is something which you will learn from the story of this young man. Okay? The first thing that we, we learn from is sacrifice, the Sahaba, the sacrifice for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Young people should sacrifice. Struggle, seeking knowledge, 
coming to the masjid. You know, that's the sahab of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second thing we're learning is you speak about the truth, whatever it takes. You may lose some interest, you may lose your job, or maybe you may lose your, maybe your, your friend or something like that, but you need to speak about the truth. You need to speak about the truth. This is something which we learn from, that you speak all, all the time, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, you speak about the truth. This is something which you are learning from also. The other thing that we are learning from also is that we should serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have said many, many times, and most of us today, maybe if we come to the masjid and we pray five times prayers, then we are done. We think we are done. If we just pray five, five times, come to the masjid, and we make tasbih and everything, alhamdulillah, we are done. That is what we think we are the best we can do. That is not the case. The Sahaba, they were not like that. The Sahaba, they were out front to sponsor, to fight, to defend, to teach. All of them, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died, they were in Africa, in, in Asia, in Europe, all of them. No one have stayed behind after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina. No one. No one. All of them, they marched out of Medina. All to Africa. Yeah? In Maghrib, in Jazair, all this Africa, in Europe, in Spain, all these places for the sake of yeah, the message of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is exactly what we need to do. To stand for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, sponsor, give, you know, money, whatever you can. And this is something at which, we are, which we are learning from this. Inshallah, I will conclude this, inshallah. And we'll stop it here, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.